Let's talk about the Detroit Pistons. Currently 27, 27 losses in a row. New NBA record. Personally, I'm happy that they broke the record that my Sixers and Cavs uh, formerly shared. I think my main thoughts on the, the Pistons losing streak, because I, I don't want to go too deep into this, because I'll be honest. I think as and throughout their entire losing streak, I think I watched one game missing in, in its entirety. And the rest has been like I've watched 10 minute, the 10 minute highlights on NBA.com two or three times for a couple of their games. Uh, their most recent game. I think that 40 and 41 played to beat the Pistons. That's fact. I think their most recent game where they played against the Jazz, where they were missing Laurie and THT um, and, and, and just a decent amount of their players, that was probably their best bet for a while. Before that, it was the game against the uh, Washington Wizards that I think a lot of people thought was their best bet in a while. And now the Pistons are getting to a point where they're about to be all of November, all of December out win in the NBA, which when you think about it like that is absolutely insane. Uh, I don't have many thoughts on terms of, oh, wow, I guess I can't do that. Let me do that real quick on the, uh, well, I'll leave it like that. I said it off because I put the number up. I, my biggest takeaway from the, the Pistons, and I think most people have talked about this, and, and we know what the problem is with the Pistons. It's just, I don't think they can fix it. Going into this season, a lot of, we, we knew the Pistons wanted to be competitive. This wasn't a year that the Pistons were looking to tank. This wasn't a year that the Pistons continue, not necessarily continue the rebuild, I'll say, but but tank in a way that just like, oh, this team is, this team is clearly rebuilding. They wanted to be, at the very least, a play-in team. I believe it was their, I can't remember if it was their GM or owner. I was reading an article that was circulating around the last couple of days that was basically like, our goal was, at the very least, play-in. We wanted to be fighting for a playoff spot. They are nowhere near that this season. I, as, and then the main, my main takeaway from all of this is the first one is obviously their biggest issue is their spacing is horrible. Um, <laughs> like just absolutely bad. They're bottom in the league in three point attempts. They're bottom in the league in three point makes and they're second worst in the league in three point percent. They just don't have lineups that can shoot the ball, which makes it harder for them to create stuff off the dribble to get to the basket because the defense could just collect very simple stuff here, obviously. But the conversation that I thought was the most interesting over the last couple of days was, is Cade Cunningham, should they move away from Cade Cunningham? Should they continue to build around Cade Cunningham? And I've seen a couple of different polls on Twitter. I've seen bigger accounts be like, hey, Pistons fans, this is a safe space. Do you want to just blow it up and restart all together? Do you want to move some pieces and build around Cade? And I think for me, the smartest thing for the Pistons to do is continue to build around Cade. Cade is Cade was not a mistake at the number one overall pick is to me at least has really really good potential in the league I was actually watching oh what is the name of his channel sporting not sporting I want to say sporting logically white guy on YouTube he, he he got a really he got two good channels one channel where he does like more like talking his stuff and his second channel I want to say is called SL breakdowns and he just like breaks down a lot of film and one of the comparisons he was making to current Cade Cunningham is um year three SGA where it was Good, decent guy putting up some solid, some good numbers on some not the best efficiency. And it was that conversation of like, like, I know not the best, not the best description, but I'm pretty sure it's sporting logically. I'll pull him up while I talk. Um, And he's compared him to SGA and, and it's basically saying that the Pistons, I guess you could say best hope or hope is to get paid Cade to continue to develop on the path that SGA has taken now being an all NBA guard, one of the best guards in the league. And at the very least, I can see Cade getting future All Stars in his in his future. I'm hoping he has an All NBA level future. Like he, I think, has the talent for it. But when I watch the one game, few games I've watched, and the 10 minute condensed version of the highlights I've watched, uh, Cade is still very talented. Cade is still very skilled. I don't think there's anything to take away from Cade in terms of just because this team is bad doesn't mean this isn't a decent player putting up empty stats on a bad team situation. Cade is a legit player, and I think it would. SL breakdowns, yeah, it's sporting logically. And he would, um, I think his gameplay would transfer good team. And that doesn't mean Pistons go out and trade him away to make him a good team, to, to put him on a good team. I'm just saying you might need to restart your build. I, I don't I don't know what that I don't know what that looks like for the Pistons, but it's not pretty. Uh Jaden Ivy was a bad pick. I'm not mad at that take. I'm not mad at that take VR. This is the video I was talking about. Let me see. The Cade Cunningham. Cade Cunningham. Uh, Cade Cunningham problem. I don't know if it's going to load because of SL breakdowns. It's a good video. I suggest you watch. All right. Moving on for them. Bo Rice Chef says, best thing for Cade is to request. I don't think the best thing for Cade is to request a trade, to be completely honest with you. Like, I don't. Yes. Yes, I understand the idea of trading Cade. He's, if I'm not mistaken, on. He has two years left on his deal. 
I should have looked this up. Okay, thought I had it already, but I don't. Yeah, so he has this year and next year. He's a restriction free agent in the summer of 2025. So I get the logic of, yo, this we're clearly not building this team properly. We need to go in a different direction. Trade K now while you have as much, uh, honestly, a, a, as much leverage as possible in terms of a trade, or you would get the biggest return you could for him if you trade him right now. But to me, in the grand scheme of things, where does that really put you for the Detroit Pistons? I guess, I mean, I guess it can't get any worse than this. You trade him now and continue to bottom out and just re rebuild through the draft. Uh, I just think they owe it to their fans to, to do better than personally. I think they owe it to their fans to do better than that, mainly because they going into the season, they want it to be competitive. However, I think also do have to be honest with yourself. Kay Cunningham, so at 24, still super young. His first year in the league, he was injured. So he, he still only played about a year and a half of NBA basketball so far in his career, even though this is his third year. It's not impossible to say, Kay, if this keeps going like this, Kay might, I mean, technically he's a restrictive free agent, so he can't just leave them. But it's nothing stopping him from requesting a trade. They don't have to trade him. I just think because he's a restricted free agent, because he's still on his rookie deal, there's no need to go down that path yet. Show him that you're willing to make some adjustments and build a team around him. That's good enough to need to have a team built around him. Also, let's talk about their coaching real quick. Monty Williams, I haven't. There's been a lot of conversation about Monty Williams as a coach uh, this so far this season, whether it be the lineups he's running who he is and is not playing, how guys are earning minutes. I remember it was, he was going back and forth with Javon Ivey for a little bit about Javon Ivey wasn't getting minutes because he's not playing defense or hasn't proved that he can play defense. But in the argument back is Javon Ivey can't prove he can play defense unless he's on the floor. Um, that's not my issue with Monty. My issue with Monty is specifically in that Utah Jazz game. Kate is going crazy down the stretch. He's the only one really scoring for their team. Monty calls a timeout with like 38 seconds left. Um, I want to say they were down two or down two or three and they drop a play for, I want to say, yeah, it was Jaden Ivy to take a contested three with like two guys setting a screen, three defenders in front of him, just a really congested pull up three on the right side of the court. When Cade was the one was the hot hand throughout the entire second, throughout that entire game. He was the only reason this, that team was in the game. They call a timeout and the play's not drawn up for him. It was just, I'm not really picky on a lot of coaches and coaching unless I, especially if I don't necessarily watch a game. Like I've watched a ton of the Pistons, so I'm not going to say Monty Williams is a bad coach for the Pistons, but I saw that play. And whenever a coach calls a timeout and you get a bad after timeout play, it makes me scratch my head and say, what, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? 